Hey there, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2. My name is Pete, and today we complete another fairly lengthy episode of our Mass Effect 2 Insanity walkthrough. In the previous episode, we have talked a bit to our crew, we have somewhat processed the events on Horizon, and we have traveled to the Asari world Ilium. And here on Ilium, we will today complete four different assignments, as well as the first half of a slightly larger mission, and while doing so, we will run into a lot of familiar faces. We will also collect a grand total of 45 Paragon points, which makes this episode one of the more important ones when it comes to pushing Commander Shepard to that particular side of the morality spectrum. We are also experimenting a bit with dialogue volume in this episode, so whenever we enter a conversation I will try to keep my voice on the same level as the people in the scene. And with that being said, let's get to it. Sorry, credit. Ilium is a cultural marvel. Humanity can learn a lot from their ingenuity. No, you don't understand. I lost it somewhere near the transport terminal. It can't be replaced. It's a token from my bondmate. It's the only thing my child has to remember her father by. Please, if you find it. No, I, I, I understand. Pardon me, I'm on a call. Twenty-five. Sell at twenty-five. No, no, no. You're not hearing me. I want to buy it up. Buy it all up. Come on, come on. Give me something. Excuse me. Excuse me, are you Commander Shepard? Alright, already quite a few short conversations to listen in on here. The Asari right here, though, seems to have a bit more to say. You're Commander Shepard? I saw your... I guess you would say your aura. I'd recognize you anywhere. I was asked to give you a message if I saw you. It's from a friend you made on Novaria. Well, Novaria was pretty icy and so was the majority of the relationships we built there. So who could this particular friend be? I met a lot of people on Novaria. Could you be more specific? I believe the message itself should make it clear. Shepard, we hide. We borrow. We build. But we know that you seek those who soured the songs of our mothers. When the time comes, our voice will join with yours. And our crescendo will burn the darkness clean. Thank you, Shepard. The Rachni will sing again because of you. Right, so it looks like we've made contact with the Rachni again, and at this point we can also get ourselves the first two Paragon points of the episode, as we pick the only morality option available here. How did you possess another Asari? You can't just take over people's minds like that. Peace, Shepard. The Rachni Queen does not control my thoughts. That was merely the message I was asked to deliver. I encountered her on an uncharted world. She saved my life. More than that, she gave me a purpose. They are an amazing people, Shepard. The galaxy owes you a great debt for giving them a second chance. Okay, now this is a conversation we will definitely not leave without asking a few questions. And up first, let's inquire how that meeting with the Ragni came about, because from all we know, they seem to be a rather reclusive species. How did you find the Ragni? I was working as a courier. Pirates ambushed my ship, and I was forced down on an uncharted planet. I was badly injured, alone and near death. Then they found me. They saved me. You obviously got off world again. Did the Rachni give you a ship? No. Countless workers repaired my ship. It runs better now than it did before. They remind me of the keepers on the Citadel in a way. All working together, each with a purpose. What happened to the pirates who attacked you? They were obliterated. As they should have been. The Rachni are not aggressive, but they do what they must. Now, it would of course be interesting to set up such a meeting ourselves. However, for that to happen, we would of course need the Rachni's location first. Can you tell me where the Rachni are? I'm afraid not. I don't even have that information myself any longer. After I met the Rachni Queen, that information was removed. It's not painful, but I simply don't remember. 
I'll remember when I need to, and her caution is understandable. The galaxy isn't yet ready for the return of the Rachni. Well, I think we can agree that it is probably best to remain cautious here. Still, even though the Rachni's location was erased from the Asari's mind, she still mentioned something about receiving a purpose. You said the Queen gave you a purpose. What do you mean? The Queen shared her song with me as I recovered. I saw the Rachni as only an Asari could. They are so beautiful and so vulnerable. They needed someone to purchase things they cannot make themselves. Someone to work within the system. An agent, if you will. I am happy to help. My life as a courier was empty and shallow. Now I'm helping a great race rebuild itself. You were really comfortable walking away from your old life? You're concerned that the Queen is controlling me. I understand, but it doesn't work like that. Our minds were in perfect harmony. I saw their beautiful spirit and their need. I knew what I had to do. If some part of that is suggestion, then it was a side effect from their efforts to save my life. I am happy. Finally then, we should likely also ask about the meaning of the message itself, because the words the Asari spoke earlier were in fact a tiny bit cryptic. I got that she was grateful. What else was her message saying? That the first Rachni war was a mistake. Something soured the voices of her people. In Rachni psychology, that would be like mind control, I think. It doesn't really translate. Anyway, she believes you are fighting the ones who did that, and she promises to help. She thinks that the Reapers caused the Rachni war? I can't say for sure, but she was certain that her ancestors were forced into war against their will. Her people aren't naturally aggressive. If they made war, it was not of their own doing. Alright, that brings this conversation to an end, but we won't leave without receiving a few more morality points. And this time we'll go for Renegade, simply because we don't have any other options available. If you can pass a message back, tell her that I'm watching. Don't make me regret setting her free. You won't. She seeks only peace. Be well, Commander Shepard. You will not see me again. Right, that is conversation number one behind us. We have earned two Paragon and two Renegade points, and our decision to free the Rachni Queen has not come back to haunt us yet. Lots of money here. Soft people who'd make good victims. This place is one bad day away from becoming Omega. Holy crap, Shepard! I thought you were dead. Well, Gianna Parasini, that is a name that we also know from our trip to Novaria in Mass Effect 1, so let's find out what she's doing here. Shepard? The news said you were dead. What happened? No, wait, probably classified. Forget I asked. You just have to lie. It's been a couple of years. I'm Gianna Parasini, Novaria Internal Affairs. You helped me nail Administrator Analeas. Yes, that was in fact a very entertaining mission full of political backstabbing. I'll leave a link to it on screen actually. And for this conversation here, we'll go with the option at the top for two Paragon points. Happy to help. What happened to Administrator Analeas? He made the one mistake Novaria won't tolerate. He got caught taking their money. He's doing a few years in white-collar prison. More importantly, he won't work in the field again. Sit down. If I remember right, I owe you a beer. What brings you to Ilium? You know, that you can talk about. Now, we could be very open here, but we also could not reveal anything. And since we won't receive any morality points here, I think we'll settle for a solid compromise. I'm working on a top secret project, mostly putting together a team and doing research right now. Sounds vague. No offense taken. I've been undercover enough to know how it goes. Hey, listen, I just remembered something. I gotta go. Talk to you later. And don't forget to drink your beer. And that beer seems to be a bit more than just a beverage, so let's have a look at the note that Gianna left us here. She mentions here that she is once again undercover and hunting an Asari merchant. And with that, it seems like we have already found our next conversation target. I'm looking for the best tech upgrades you have. Of course, I can help you with a consult and figure out what options work for you. Welcome! You look like someone who needs high-quality equipment. Feel free to look around. 
My store has the best tech and biotic equipment on Ilium. Right, so let's start with the basics here and ask what she's selling, just to get a better understanding of who we're actually dealing with. What kind of merchandise do you carry? The latest in biotic upgrades and Omni tool modifications. Very high quality. Sometimes I even get special items in. No promises, of course. Now, very importantly, before we start investigating for Jana here, we want to obtain ourselves a discount. That can be achieved with the Charm and Intimidate options on the left, or we could also blow Gianna's cover with the option on the bottom right and receive a discount that way. However, we do not want to interfere with her interrogations, I think, so let's grab the discount the old-fashioned way. Is everything here so expensive? I plan to drop a lot of credits today. Really? I'm outfitting a team for a dangerous mission. I need the best and I'm willing to pay for it, as long as you work with me. Well, perhaps I could give you a preferred rate at the kiosk. Here, a small discount, and when I get special items in, you can take a look. And that already sounds a lot more promising. Let's dig a bit deeper here. What kind of special items are we talking about? Oh, you know, schematics, designs. Nothing illegal, but I may not have all the licenses to sell them. Okay, nothing illegal yet, so it seems like we have to press a bit harder. And once again, we could warn the merchant here. However, that would not give us an additional discount. And the Paragon option is to side with Gianna in this mission, so that is exactly what we'll do. Do you have anything else? Anything not listed on your main merchandise kiosk? Well, there is one thing. Very advanced design. Not publicly available yet. That's because it's still in development on Averia, and illegal for export. Hello, Hermia. Parasini! You set me up! But this isn't Noveria. You don't have the authority to arrest me! I don't care whether you go to jail. I've got all the evidence I need to find you out of business. Well, I have to admit, whatever she tried to sell there sounded intriguing, and who knows, maybe there is still a small chance we can get our hands on it. Do you have the authority to seize the schematic she's trying to sell? I don't have to. Hermia was under suspicion. We leaked a faulty device to her. All this thing will ever do is blow up in your face. I, I need to go. I have to talk to my lawyer. Talk fast, Hermia. When the fines hit, you won't be able to afford him. Ah, oh, that was good. I've got to go file a few papers. Come by my table when you've got a minute. Now, that was certainly quite the elaborate setup by Gianna. Before we return to her to complete the assignment, though, we'll have a quick look at the shop's inventory here. However, just to see the three things we're not going to buy at this point. Yes, we do have a bit of cash, but we'll also do a lot of shopping later. And even with a discount, the items here are fairly expensive, while at the same time, with our playstyle, there is nothing here that we desperately need. We will, of course, buy all of this stuff eventually. For now, though, let's take our five Paragon points and return to Gianna. Hermia is going to be a very poor woman very shortly. Thanks for the help, Shepard. I love nailing Asari. So ageless and superior. Then you get them and they squeal like schoolgirls. And we can immediately get two more Paragon points by choosing the option at the top here. And I think it does hold some truth as well. It must be nice having a job that you really enjoy. I wanted to be a cop or C-Sec, but my family had bills. I needed the money a corporate job brought in. Besides, in this job, you don't see things that make it hard to sleep at night. White-collar crime is nice and clean. Hell, at least this time I didn't have to wear heels and a dress. Well, with her giving us a small callback here, we might as well go all in. So let's ask about how she got that job on Noveria in the first place. How'd you end up on Noveria, anyway? Scholarship program and a competitive internship. Turned out I was only middling at the science, but I could always ferret out secrets. You grow up poor and surrounded by rich kids, you get good at hiding yourself. Helps with going undercover. And it appears she has been undercover off and on ever since, which might not necessarily be easy over such a long period of time. It must be hard, going undercover so often. It's not so bad. Go new places, be new people. The only weird part is when you go home and try to talk to people, and you forget how to react. Like it's another cover, you know? Deep down, part of you likes fooling people. That's what makes you good at it. Part of me, yeah. I grew up poor and working class. Now I walk around the rich and powerful, taking notes, getting evidence. And they never see me coming. Well, and now there is one more job taken care of, which of course begs the question, what's next? What's up next for you? Research. We've had some hacking attacks lately, and I want to make sure they're external. A lot of people are suddenly interested in dark energy. My bosses want to know if it's something to worry about. 
That'll hold me over until I have to go back undercover anyway. Now with the option at the top, we'll get the final two Paragon points of this assignment, and Shepard will also get himself a small reward. It's been a pleasure, Gianna. You too, Shepard. See you around. Oh, hell with it. Mwah. Much better than an autograph. Take care of yourself, Shepard. Alright, that's 40 XP, 4 Paragon Points and the first assignment completed. Up next, we will now pay a visit to Liara, who is not only Shepard's former squad member, but also his love interest from Mass Effect 1. Are you a Quarian or Volus who is tired of being passed over for promotions because of dis- Hello, Commander Shepard. Liara will be pleased to see you. And before we go in, it sure can't hurt to know our personnel. You're Liara's assistant? Yes. Liara relies upon me to acquire useful intelligence. I don't have her network of contacts, but I supply her with supplemental data. It's really an honor to work with her. Now that sentence implies that Liara is well looked at here on Ilium, and again, every information we can get before we go in might be of use. What's Liara's reputation here on Ilium? She is greatly respected. In a few short years, she's amassed a sizable network of connections. She could have even more political power than she already wields, if she weren't so focused on her personal goals. But I believe she should tell you about that, not me. Right, looks like Liara is doing well for herself, but enough with the chit-chat, let's go and see her in person. I'll talk to you later. Of course, Commander. Have you faced an Asari commando unit before? Few humans have. I'll make it simple. Either you pay me, or I flay you alive. With my mind. Shepard! Nixeris, hold my calls. My sources said you were alive, but I never believed. It's very good to see you. Right, a bit of an awkward scene here considering how we just received the kiss on the cheek from Gianna, but Liara did not seem to mind or notice. Now, despite the warm welcome, a lot of things have undoubtedly changed. The most obvious one probably how Liara does business nowadays. You have sources now? A few. Sources, contacts, even a little hired muscle. I've been working as an information broker. It's paid the bill since you... well, for the past two years. And now you're back, gunning for the Collectors with Cerberus. Now we'll get another chance to ask her to join us later, so instead let's ask her how she got that information. That's not exactly public knowledge. Neither is you being alive, Shepard. Information is my business now, and if you need information on finding people, I'm happy to help. And well, since she's offering her services that quickly, we might as well get this over with. Yes, we will be recruiting two more squad members here on Ilium, and at this point we can learn a bit more about both of them. There's an Asari named Samara here on Ilium. Do you know where I could find her? Samara? Yes. She arrived recently and registered with Tracking Officer Dara. You can find Dara at the Transportation Hub. Why would Samara have to register with a Tracking Officer? Is she a criminal? No. In fact, she's quite the opposite. Samara is a Justicar, one of an ancient sect of Asari warriors. Dara can tell you more. I'm looking for Thane Krios. He's supposed to be here on Ilium. The assassin? Yes. He arrived here a few days ago. My sources tell me he may be targeting a corporate executive, Nisana Dantius. He contacted a woman named Serena. Serena has an office in the cargo transfer levels. Perhaps she can tell you where Krios is. That was all just off the top of your head? I'm a very good information broker, Shepard. The world of intrigue isn't that different from a dig site. Except that the dead bodies still smell. Thanks for the help. That's all I needed to know. Of course. If there's anything else I can help you with, let me know. So we now have places to go for Samara and Thane, but we could certainly also use the services of a well-connected young Asari. What about you, Liara? I could use your help on this mission. I can't, Shepard. I'm sorry. I have commitments here, things I need to take care of. Well, at this point, I think it's somewhat obvious that she would probably not reject our help, so let's find out what Liara is working on. What kind of things do you need to take care of? 
Are you in trouble? No, no trouble. But it's been a long two years. I had things to do while you were gone. I have debts to repay. Listen, if you want to help, I need someone with hacking expertise. Someone I can trust. If you could disable security at key points around Ilium, you could get me information I need. That would help me a great deal. Now, to be honest, that sounds like a fairly easy and straightforward job, something that you do not necessarily need a Spectre for. Hacking a terminal sounds pretty easy. Why do you need me? I don't know anyone else I can trust. Hacking the security node won't get you the data. It just creates a minor glitch in the system. You'll have a short time to find a local server left vulnerable by that glitch and upload the data to my system. I'm leaving my own system vulnerable so that the data can be imported during that short time. Now, Liara has been very vague regarding what all of this is actually about, so let's see if we cannot at least get a bit more info out of her. What's this all about, Liara? Can't you just talk to me? Don't you think I want to, Shepard? This isn't because I don't trust you. This is Ilium. Anything I say is probably being recorded. Well, understandable, but maybe we'll also get a chance to talk to her in private later. For now, all we can do is once again offer our help, even though there are no morality points to be had in this conversation. If it'll help you, I'll take care of it. When you hack one, a server will open somewhere nearby for a short time. You can download data from there, if you hurry. Thank you, Shepard. This may help me pay a great debt. And since we have already asked about Samara and Thane, we can leave at this point. After all, we now have another job to do. I'll talk to you later, Liara. So that definitely went a bit better than our meeting with Caden a few episodes back. Still, it looks like our chances to actually recruit Liara are slim at best. But maybe we can do something about that by helping her out first. Before we do that, however, let's head over to the local bar. Do you have anything flashier? I want something that says, I own this room. I own you. I'll see what we can do, sir. Up the stairs in the back we go, and I apologize for talking over the news report in the background, but news reports and advertisements are pretty much unavoidable here on Ilium, and not talking over them would make it pretty hard for me to apply any commentary at all. I'm gonna have that asshole arrested. Now we have an angry Asari outside of the bar here. Let's see what she can tell us about the business going on inside. Watch yourself if you go in there. Some human is causing trouble. He's demanding that I sign the place over to him. We only have access to the Paragon option in this conversation, so let's pick that because I don't think we're in much danger here. I'll be careful. Or you could kill him. You know, legally, in self-defense. I'd make a really good witness. Failing that, I'm hooking up security cameras now. If he or anybody else causes trouble, I'll have their asses arrested. Alright, that's two Paragon points for us, let's head inside now. But before we go and see who's causing trouble, we'll listen in to a lengthy yet fairly amusing conversation. I still don't see why we're here. Salarians do not get married. My family simply negotiated a reproduction contract. Whatever, it's the closest you guys get to a wedding. And that means you get a bachelor party. End of story. I don't understand. Humans celebrate wedding contracts by tempting infidelity? That makes no sense. Calm down, man. Don't embarrass me in front of the stripper. What do Turians do? Do Turians do this too? I'm just here for the drinks. You said that bachelor parties are for very close friends. We're just co-workers. We've been co-workers for five years, though. Aren't Solarian years like dog years? Okay, now that's offensive. I appreciate the gesture, but my people don't even have sex drives the way humans do. Uh-huh. Take a look at that, man. Everybody likes the Asari. Everybody. But we actually reproduce by... My word. She is very... limber. I can appreciate her dancing in an aesthetic manner, but... I don't have... feelings of... She is a lovely shade of blue. Okay. That makes my legs hurt just watching it. And my knees are meant to bend that way. This isn't as bad as I'd feared. It's actually... Is it warm in here? Okay. You see that bit there? The little divot in her abdomen? It's called a belly button. Humans in Asari have them. And you're gonna be doing shots out of it later tonight. That can't be sanitary. Not the point, man. I can understand why I might find Asari attractive, but... How can they be attractive to humans, too? They look just like Salarians. What? They look exactly like us. I'm... 
I I'm not seeing the Solarian thing at all. At all. You're both wrong. Asari look just like Blue Turians. Look at the head fringe. Wait. You don't think they're like mind controlling us to see them as attractive, do you? Please be quiet. You're going to ruin Asari for me. And there aren't many Turian women on Ilium. Well, I suppose watching just one more dance wouldn't hurt. Ha <laughs> ha that's the spirit. As long as I'm not paying for the drinks. All right, that's all we can get here. Time to head over to the bar and see who's causing trouble. You're really holding out on me? I'm a man on the edge. I got nothing to lose. Uh-huh. I'll do anything to get the job done. I'll go all the way without a second thought. Uh-huh. Well, if it isn't Conrad Werner, Commander Shepard's superfan from Mass Effect 1. And it looks like he has bitten off a bit more than he can chew, so let's intervene. You want to see how far I'll go? I learned how to shove a gun in people's faces from... Commander Shepard? Hey, if you know this idiot, can you rein him in before I slap his ass with a singularity? Shepard? Is it really you? It's me, Conrad Werner! We met on the Citadel? I wanted to become a Spectre? Oh, uh, and then you shoved a gun in my face? You showed me what it meant to be truly extreme. I learned that lesson well. So you're alive, huh? I hear it goes like that in the biz. Why don't you sit back and watch how it's done? I got some asses to kick. Now we have two Renegade options available here and honestly he would be deserving of both. However, we probably also want to keep as much of a low profile as possible. And this is also a Paragon playthrough of the game, so we'll go with the corresponding option at the top. Conrad, why are you acting like me? What are you, crazy? I'm nothing like you. I'm not a Spectre working for the Council. I'm on my own, backed only by my wits and my nerves. No rules, no laws, just whatever it takes to get the job done. I'm not like you at all. Now let's drag this out as much as we can because Conrad is apparently completely delusional and let's get a better picture of what it is that he's actually doing. So you just wander the galaxy righting wrongs? Hey, don't say it like that. I talk to people, you know? Ask them if they have big problems that only I can solve. You'd be surprised how many people are just waiting for someone to talk to them. Sometimes I poke through crates too. You know, for extra credits. Speaking of credits, that armor that he's wearing not only looks familiar, but also pretty damn expensive, which leaves us wondering how he was able to get his hands on it. How did you get that armor? Oh, they make some pretty convincing replicas these days, if you're willing to pay. Getting the whole getup was pretty expensive, but my wife was really supportive. She even paid for my shuttle fare off-world. Well, I assume she did not pay for the shuttle back, but that's another story. Much more important at this point is whether or not Conrad is actually qualified at all for what he's claiming to do here. Conrad, do you have any actual combat training? I'm saving the galaxy, Shepard. I don't have time for training. Don't you get it? You are a big jerk. But you saved the galaxy and showed other races that humans mattered. And then you died. The galaxy needed someone like you, Shepard. We all did. I had to do something. Lastly now, let's confront him with the fact that it is extremely easy to see through the disguise, which might make his self-awarded occupation a tiny bit harder. <sighs> Any decent security system will detect that you aren't in the military, much less part of my squad. I just say that I'm deep cover and don't appear on systems. I'm doing the best I can, okay? You were a hero. You saved the galaxy and showed everyone what humanity could do. And then you died. The galaxy needed someone like you, Shepard. We all did. I had to do something. Right, now unless you're desperately going for renegade points, it is very important not to pick the option at the bottom here. I will explain at the end of the mission why that is. So instead we'll go neutral with the option in the middle here, which will in a second also give us the chance for two paragon points. Why were you trying to get the deed to this place? This place is actually a front for a red sand dealer. I need to take it over to crack the ring. What? Who the hell told you that? The owner of that weapons store near the carport? She's an undercover cop. She told me about it when I introduced myself. Listen, crap for brains. First, we don't sell red sand. Second, red sand is legal on Ilium. You just need a license. And third, who in their right mind would reveal to be an undercover cop just seconds after meeting a complete stranger? Yes, this smells extremely fishy, and I think it's best we take it from here. I'll talk to this undercover cop and figure out what's going on. Thank you. If I kill annoying customers, it usually causes property damage. 
that comes out of my pay. Just let me know if you need any help, Shepard. Now, before we leave to take care of the assignment, we'll now have a chat with the bartender. And while it reveals a few very interesting things about her, it also drags out a bit. So if you want to skip the entire thing, then you can jump ahead to roughly the 36 minute mark and pick things back up with a slightly more intoxicated Commander Shepard. Thanks for taking care of that crazy guy. Saves me having to beat him to death with his own spine. That makes the other customers nervous. Anyway, this is Eternity, and I'm Athena, a sorry matriarch and bartender. Get you anything? Yes, you heard that right, she is apparently a matriarch, and understandably, that is the first thing we'll ask about here. After all, matriarchs are generally some of the most well-respected among the Asari race. You're an Asari matriarch? I thought matriarchs served as honored advisors. Right. Which I do here at this bar. I know, not what you'd expect. But nobody on Thessia wanted to listen to my wise counsel, so here I am. Dad was a Krogan who fought in the Rachni Wars. My mother fought in the Krogan Rebellions. I've pretty much seen it all. Sounds like an interesting history she has with her parents there. So let's ask about her father first, and then about her mother. You said your father fought in the Rachni Wars. Yeah, when he was young. Love showing off his war scars. Krogan think they're sexy. Me. I go for asses. When I was a girl, he'd tell me about landing on this poison-filled world and stomping a Rachni queen at a muck. Scientists say all that stuff about his getting genetic material from the father is crap. Seems like I got a bit of his mouth, though. Your mother fought in the Krogan rebellions? I don't know whether she fought. She scouted, sniped a few people, and blew up a couple of space stations. You know, commando stuff. She'd put the old commando leathers on for special nights with Dad. Goddess, that was embarrassing. Now, you may have noticed that her mother fought against the Krogan in the rebellions, which certainly makes taking a Krogan as a mate an unusual decision. If your mother fought in the rebellions and your father was a Krogan, didn't that cause tension? They didn't meet until a few hundred years after the Turians put the boot in with the damn genophage. As far as either one knew, they were both just warriors. Dad boasted. Mom stayed quiet. Mom was a matriarch herself. Dad was near on a thousand when the truth came out. What happened when he found out? I was about a hundred, shaking my ass in some sleazy bar. They got me on the link, told me that they were gonna have it out, and made me promise to love whichever one survived. Turned out to be damn easy, since neither one did. Family, huh? What a kick in the quad. She has mentioned the age of the Asari and Krogan numerous times now, while Shepard himself is only back from the dead for a few days now, which certainly helps put things in perspective. What's it like, living for nearly a thousand years? Violent. Wars break out. Colonies get destroyed. Sometimes you hear good news, like that colony on Pharaoh surviving. That's the exception, though. You find peace in whatever arms will hold you. Turian, Elcor, Hanar. Even had a pure-blood daughter. I was the father didn't work out. And one day you wake up, your figure's gotten matriarchal, and everyone else is too young to remember how the Quarians looked inside those suits. Finally then, let's once again ask about her status as a matriarch and how it fits in with working at a bar, because honestly, to me, it still doesn't. Why is a matriarch in a bar serving drinks? It's better than what most other matriarchs are doing. Look at that screw-up with Saren and his geth a few years back. Their ships were hanging bare-assed in space when Saren started shooting. If not for you humans, we would have bought it right there. And I warned him. Told people on Thessia what was coming and they didn't want to hear it. What didn't they want to hear? That art and philosophy and political prowess wasn't gonna cut it. We can't go a single Asari lifetime without some big war breaking out. We need to get our daughters working earlier, not spending their wild maiden years stripping or in merc bands. When I started talking about making new mass relays ourselves, they laughed the blue off my ass. So now, I serve drinks. Well, I suppose that's enough questions for now. And to be honest, drinks sound pretty good right about now. Thanks for telling me about that. That's what I'm here for, babe. Catch you anything else? And yes, let's have ourselves something to drink. We have done so in every bar that we visited before. And so, for the sake of completion, let's keep that streak going. I'd like something to drink. Sure. I'll set up a tab at the drink kiosk. Knock yourself out. Literally, if you want. Just don't drink anything for Turians or Quarians. Does nasty things to your insides. Once saw Krogan drink a liquefied Turian on a dare six or seven centuries back. 
Nobody came out of that one looking pretty. One last time, we can now ask her about herself, but don't expect anything groundbreaking here. What's it like being an Asari matriarch? Pretty much like being anything else. My parents had it more interesting than I did. And yes, that is in fact it for now. The investigate tree here doesn't give us anything new, so let's wrap up the conversation and start drinking. Thanks for telling me about that. Right. Don't eat the nuts in the Red Bulls. They're for Turians and Quarians. You'll get cramps. Right, here we are. No morality points from this conversation, but we have gained access to the drink kiosk. And our first purchase will be a simple shot of liquor for 5 credits, and we'll work our way up from there. Up next, for 10 credits, we'll have a glass of wine, more specifically a glass of famous Asari honey mead, and that is only the second of three drinks we'll have. And we have saved the best for last, we now have the mystery drink. For 25 credits, we can now have something rumored to be from the deepest reaches of the Traverse, so if this doesn't get us dizzy, I think nothing will. Alright, a little shaky but still standing, we can now make our exit and listen into one more conversation on the way. So then he says, Oh, it's okay. Our amino acids are all different. So it's not like we can get diseases or anything if we go natural. I'm telling you, this is why you shouldn't date humans. So then I had to explain about cross-species fluid contact. Completely killed the mood. Not to mention that you're a quarian. How could he be so insensitive? And here we are, time to leave the bar and make our way over to the one area that we haven't explored yet, which is also a reason I like the assignment involving Conrad Werner, because while visiting Liara is pretty much a no-brainer, to get this assignment you have no other choice but to explore the other two areas as well. If this is the best you have, I'll make do. But you're certain the neural stimulators are compatible with both my suit and Asari physiology? Absolutely. In fact, I use this model at home, sir. Oh. Do you? Right, this is, by the way, not the end of the exchange between these two. So we will pass by once more to see how things conclude. For now, though, we'll make our way over to the shipping area, from where we can then continue on to the merchant district. I know the data is vital to the Kurosa family. Asana Dantius didn't give us time to pack. I'm lucky I got out at all. Her mercenaries were starting to shoot. If she lets us back in, I'll get it, I promise. If not, well, we'll just have to hope. Excuse me, I'm on an important call. Now, the name Nasana Dantius should still ring a bell from Mass Effect 1, so keep that in mind. And the Asari sitting and shipping here will also play a role later, because with her we will start one of the recruitment quests on Ilium. However, that is stuff for another episode. For now, let's enter the Merchant District. Trust me, the goods coming in from the Terminus systems are great for business. I don't know, some of them seem dangerous. That's the whole point. Danger means more contract work for us. No, I haven't had any luck yet. She insists it was legal. I don't know. I'm going to call in a favor and have a friend examine the contract. Alright, look who we have here, a green Asari, and there aren't many of those. As a matter of fact, this one is all too familiar. Shepard. I... I don't suppose you'd remember me. I'm Shiala. We met on Pharos during the Geth attack. Saren had given me to the Thorian creature as a slave, and you killed it and saved me. I promised to help Zeus Hope recover. I'm actually here on Ilium for just that purpose. Well, it has been two years after we have defeated the Thorian, so let's find out how the colony is doing nowadays. How is Zeus Hope doing? We've done a lot of rebuilding. We even salvaged some useful material from the Geth ship you destroyed. The Exogeny researchers got called back to their headquarters, however, along with what was left of the Thorian. Now, at the beginning, Shiala still sounded like something was bothering her, and that might very well have something to do with the colony itself. Is it Exogeny pushing colonists around again, or did the Thorians somehow survive our fight? No. Exogeny has been very supportive of Zeus' hope. They actually seem to want to help us survive, and the Thorian is dead. 
Though, after all you went through to kill it, I understand your concern. I fear that after our adventure on Pharos, my purpose on Ilium will seem mundane by comparison. Of course, though, that doesn't mean that we won't be able to take care of it. As a matter of fact, let's offer our help right away. That way, we'll also get ourselves two more Paragon points. Is there something I can do to help? I'd appreciate it. I've reached the limits of my diplomatic abilities, and I prefer not to start trouble. Some of the colonists had health problems as a result of the Thorian control. We hired a colonial survey group to do some medical scans. But the medical contract apparently allows the company to perform invasive procedures without our consent. That's why I'm here. And those health problems might very well also affect her, because despite the Thorian long gone, her skin color still hasn't changed back. Wait a minute. Shiela, you were only green when the Thorian made you a clone. The real you was blue, like normal Asari. Those health problems, I said, were related to the Thorian control. This is mine. A few months after the Thorian died, my skin pigment changed. My biotic abilities are unstable as well. I'm also having vivid dreams about my time with the Thorian. It is disconcerting. Okay, now at this point it's probably also interesting to know what other health problems there are, because as far as I can recall, Shiala was actually the only Asari in Zeus Hope. What kind of health problems did the colonists have? Headaches or muscle spasms similar to what they experienced while under Thorian control. Sometimes the colonists near another former Thorian victim shared sensations like heat or pain. It has to be a result of trace amounts of the Thorian's parasitic spores, you can see why we'd want it studied and cured. Alright, now before we go in to talk on her behalf, it sure can't hurt to learn a bit more about the actual contract and also the issues that came after signing it. Tell me more about the contract you signed for these scans. Barrier Frontiers was interested in our problem. They offered to perform medical scans and deliver treatment for next to nothing. I should have known it was too good to be true, but we were desperate. In the fine print, we apparently agreed to let them perform invasive follow-up procedures if they deem it valuable. Which they have. Can they actually force these procedures on you? No. But they can declare us in breach of contract. Which means we're responsible for the full price we would have paid normally. Zoo's hope just got back on its feet. There's no way we can afford that, Shepard. Okay, no morality points here and we have offered our help already. So let's agree to take care of this right away. I'll talk to the survey group. I appreciate it, Shepard. The Barrier Frontiers representative knows about the issue. Well, technically, right away was not 100% true. Before we talk to the representative, we'll quickly hack this terminal over here. This is one of three we'll have to gain access to for the quest from Liara. And once the firewalls have been removed, we have to find another terminal in close vicinity, which we can now access for exactly one minute to upload some data to Liara. Alright, we'll have to do this two more times in this area, but for now, let's get this whole contract issue sorted out. I saw your conversation, human. You're here to complain about the medical contracts those colonists from Pharaoh signed. I suggest you leave. Your life is short enough. Do not waste what time you have bothering me. Okay, it appears she likes to get straight to the point, so let's do the same, and let's ask why the contract cannot be altered. Why are you insisting on these tests? What use could they possibly be? Their use is not your concern. A legal binding contract was signed. Nothing else matters. All of you. Humans. Salarians. Turians. You come to our planet, then complain that our laws don't suit you. The galaxy would be a better place if nobody but the Asari had ever dragged themselves out of the primordial muck. Right, she very obviously has issues that go far beyond a simple contract, but if she can play the race card, then so can we. You seem to forget that a human saved you from Saren and the Geth. The Geth created by the idiotic Quarians? That a rogue Turian Spectre led in an attack? The Geth didn't start with the Citadel. They attacked your human colony, Eden Prime, first. You humans brought the Geth upon us. You and the Turians are the Quarians. My people's deaths are on your hands. Now, we have the option at the top left here, but we're not going to pick that just yet. In one way or another, that will appear four more times, so instead let's ask why she resents other races so much. Why are you so prejudiced against aliens? Phew, where do I begin? 
with Salarian explorers unleashing the Rachni upon us, then unleashing the Krogan to correct their mistake? Or the Turians, so eager to bomb every problem away? Or humans, the new arrivals who already think they should be in charge? Every war that has plagued this galaxy has been caused by your people. My people's deaths are on your hands. Now one thing that doesn't really fit in here is that Azari are normally very open to mating with other races, and they do so as a means to randomize genetics in their offspring. I thought Asari preferred to mate with other races for genetic diversity. A short-sighted mistake perpetrated by the same self-hating malcontents who spawned the hateful term pure blood. We hardly need your alien DNA to randomize genetic material. A little radiation would work just as well. You provide no diversity, no new insights, no advancement. You bring only chaos and senseless deaths. Ah. And once again, we will not select the option on the top left here. Instead, with the topic of race relations properly exhausted now, let's get back to what this is actually all about. You really think this is legal? Maybe Ilian's contract analyst should look it over. You ignorant yokel. I was negotiating contracts when your ancestors were still burning witches and enslaving each other. I haven't lost a contract dispute in 70 years. Try me. Right, we might hold off going down that route, but maybe we can still negotiate something regarding the actual procedures. Perhaps we could work out different tests. Something that will work for both sides. If the colonists were not willing to abide by the terms of the contract, they should not have signed it. The onus is not upon me to accommodate them. Right, and now, and only now, will we select the option on the top left here. So you'd be this harsh in your contract terms if these were Asari colonists? If they were Asari, they'd be dealing with problems unleashed by another race. Asari like my bondmate, who died when the Geth rebelled against the Quarians. Or my daughters, who died during the Geth attack on the Citadel. One worked in the Embassy, the other was a greeter for the Consort. I'm not speaking in hypotheticals, human. The aliens will never be my allies. The best they can do is give me useful medical data. Right, now that dialogue option we just picked will always result in more or less the exact same lines, so picking it once is absolutely enough. At this point we have also unlocked a charm and an intimidate option to handle the issue, and of course, as always, we'll pick the charm option for 5 Paragon points. Why was your bondmate on the Quarian homeworld? Studying the Quarians. Not their technology, but their music. She loved all their art. Said they had old souls. I think that's where my daughters got it from. Both of them love talking with people, exploring new cultures. They sound like wonderful people. The galaxy is lesser for their loss. Yes, it is. Do you think they'd want you to do this? I I'm not a... I didn't... Sending an amended contract. No more tests, no fees. There's enough grief in this galaxy. I don't need to add to it. Alright, looks like we have once again done some good for Zeus Hope, but before we bring the good news to Shiala, let's do some quick shopping. The kiosk here offers four sets of star charts, however, we will actually only buy two the Minos Wasteland and the Pylos Nebula. The other two will be unlocked as part of quest lines or DLC missions, so buying them beforehand is absolutely unnecessary, and in doing so you will only needlessly waste 1000 credits. Did you get the star charts? Yeah. I had to deal with Arinya though. I feel like I need a shower. What do you expect? She's a pure blood. They're all like that. You did it! I just got the revised contracts. Thank you, Shepard. You've saved Zeus Hope again. I don't think I could've... Is it always like this? Yesterday's problems lingering in some new form. Isn't anything ever just fixed? One last chance here for two more Paragon points in this assignment, so let's spread a bit more of a positive outlook on things. You've got the power to make a difference, Shiala. Not everyone does. 
You're right. You gave us a chance by saving the colony. I can't let them down. I won't. Thank you for what you've done here, Shepard. I'll keep doing what I can. Maybe some time when I'm not organizing the colony and you're not doing whatever you do. All right, that's another assignment completed in the back there, by the way. We can see Officer Dara. She will play a role for the second recruitment mission we'll do here on Ilium. But once again, that one will have to wait for a bit. For example, you know that new drug, the one that causes permanent neural scarring? That's horrible. There's a 12-page contract for shipping, then a waiver for use. I charged for 50 hours, plus overtime. At this point now, we can continue the mission involving Conrad Werner, who was apparently approached by an undercover cop posing as a weapons merchant. You're sure gateway weapons and armor are good enough for Eclipse? Yeah, I've got a friend in Eclipse. She told me what I needed to get. Good. I'm pretty good at bypassing firewalls. Maybe they're looking for techs. Can I help you with something? And because we really only have one option here to continue the conversation, let's pick that one. I talked to an old friend, Conrad Werner. You told him that the Eternity Lounge was selling red sand. Oh, you're Conrad's friend. Yes, that place is really dangerous. I should know. I'm an undercover cop. Did you get me the deed to the bar? I need the deed to, uh, stop the red sand dealers. Right, now once again we want to obtain ourselves a discount here before solving the mission, but before we do we have the option to obtain two renegade points for free, so let's make sure to grab those first. You lied to Conrad Werner. You're despicable. Oh, so you're not as dumb as your friend. Well, it was worth a shot. I'll be going now. And lest you get angry, you should know that this whole place is under video surveillance. Mandatory for weapon sales. And we're still not going with the Charm or Intimidate option yet. Instead, with the ruse now exposed, we can ask the Asari a few questions about her plan. Why did you send Conrad to harass the owners of that lounge? Are you kidding? Prime real estate like that? I'd make a killing. I get nothing at this crappy kiosk. I'd have been an idiot not to put some pressure on them, and your friend was easy to convince. You don't see an easy opportunity like that every day. And yes, that doesn't exactly sound legal, so maybe we can already get her in trouble for that. You think you can threaten another business and get away with it? I didn't threaten anybody. Your human friend did. It's not my fault he misunderstood me when I talked about red sand dealers. And my surveillance cams had an unfortunate malfunction while I told him about the situation. Now we could simply tell her to leave, but that wouldn't get us anything. So instead, for five Paragon points, we can turn the whole thing around on her and construct a little fairy tale of our own. Now that we all know where we stand, why don't you go take over your new bar? They're ready to hand over the deed. You expect me to believe that you're going to help me? Why wouldn't I? You get what you want and I get a nice discount, right? Good business for everyone. For a human, you're pretty smart. So what do we do now? Go in, be tough, and let them know you're with me. They'll hand the deed right over. Well, great. Here, I'll set you up for a discount. Thanks for the help. Alright, perfect. We have obtained a discount and the Asari is now hopefully running straight into trouble. In the meantime, we can get our hands on some sweet new merchandise, as we will now buy absolutely everything this shop has to offer. We are starting things off with an expensive heavy skin weave for 75,000 credits, but because it gives Shepard a 30% health boost, I would say it's well worth the investment. This looks interesting. For 50,000 credits then we'll buy a submachine gun damage upgrade. Quite a few of our regular squad members are wielding SMGs, including Miranda, so this one will be very useful down the line as well. Slightly more important then is the assault rifle damage upgrade. That is the weapon Shepard is using most of the time, and for 50,000 credits the upgrade here will help us stay ahead of our opponents. I'll take it. Last but not least then we have the amplifier plates, and honestly I'm only buying these for the sake of completion. At the moment Shepard doesn't really have any damage dealing powers he's using frequently, so the bonus might not be all that useful, but the item is cheap and by buying it now we don't have to worry about it later. All blue rows of Ilium. Let your roots dig deep into the hot soil of Tachanka. Let our scorching sun and sheeting rain turn your supple beauty into strength. For if our love is to survive, it must grow thorns to pierce the hand of any that would uproot it. 
Okay, looks like the Asari over here has a bit of an admirer. However, she also does not look too comfortable with the whole situation. What do you want? Sorry, sorry, that damn Krogan's love poems are getting on my nerves. And because we are on a bit of a helping spree, we will offer our assistance here as well. No matter what the outcome, we will at least get two Paragon points out of it. Is that Krogan bothering you? No, no, you don't need to hurt him or anything. He's harmless. Which, I know, Krogan, so it's hard to believe. His name is Char. We're kind of dating, but, well, we're on a break. And he's trying to show me how sensitive he is by, well, wooing me. It's really bad. Right, so we can ask two questions here, and let's go through both of them in chronological order. It doesn't seem common for Asari to date Krogan. What brought you two together? He's a fun guy, really smart, especially for a Krogan. And he's got a good job as a transport technician. It's fun to join a mercenary guild or dance at bars for a few centuries, but eventually you hit the matron stage, you know? Then you get your back tattoo removed, let your scalp go back to its natural blue, and settle down with someone dependable. Well, to be honest, that all sounds pretty good so far. So let's find out why the two of them are on a break at the moment. On the rocky plains of Tachanka, I will build you a garden from the bones of my ancestors. Why are the two of you on a break? He's serious. Serious, as in talking about kids. Char is a great guy to date, but for something permanent... Krogans live long lives. It's not like dating a human where you just stick it out for a century till they die. Uh, no offense. It made me wonder if he really likes me, or if he just wants kids. He can't have them any other way, you know. Because of the genophage. That sounds like a question you should ask him. I did. I don't think he realized that our kids would always have been Asari. Non-Asari don't always get that we're not taking alien DNA, we're just using it to randomize some of the genetic information. Anyway, Char was quiet for a long time. Then he said that he'd love our girls no matter what color they were. And yes, that certainly sounds like making a decision is in order. Otherwise, I fear we will hear poetry for quite a while longer. You need to talk to your boyfriend. He's just gonna keep shouting poetry until you do. I know, but it's tough. I like him a lot. Hell, I love him. But I don't know if he's permanent bond material. Right, now honestly, I would prefer to leave these two alone, because I feel like this is not an affair that we should be meddling in. However, five Paragon points are to be had here, and so the completionist in me once again takes over here, as we can now charm these two into getting back together. Look at him. He's obviously crazy about you. Is he? I mean, what if he just wants to have kids? Am I just his baby-making machine? He said I wasn't, but... If he said that, then you either trust him, so you have nothing to worry about, or you don't, and you've already decided. I, I guess I hadn't thought about it like that. And I do trust him, if he said it. I'm going to talk to him. Here, I've given you a discount at the terminal. Thanks for the help. Alright, one more assignment completed, one more discount obtained, and the kiosk here also only offers a few cheap collectibles. So for just over 6,500 credits, we'll buy ourselves a paddlefish for the aquarium on the Normandy, and then we'll also stock up our ship model collection by purchasing a cruiser and a freighter. And as we now approach the one hour mark in this video, we have done almost everything we can in this area. The only thing left to do is some hacking for Liara. The second of three terminals is over to the right of the entrance here, the corresponding system then near the shop that we just emptied out. What about a fish? She loves the garden. We could add a pond. She doesn't need a fish, Dad. Maybe a shirt. Or a card. Ilium. Hey, you're blue shifting already. That's funny, right? A sorry skin color and the Doppler effect? Dad, just get her anything. Or don't. I need to get her something. A memento. The third and final terminal then is on the wall next to the weapons merchant. The corresponding system meanwhile is on the opposite side of the area, and with a one minute window we even have enough time to listen in to another conversation. It's just, we're looking for weapons. Shouldn't you be taking this seriously? Hey, I'm 60 years old and finally out of my parents' house, and Eclipse girls never lack for, um, company. You could get killed. What about you? I'm almost 20. My genetic stats are average, and my clan has little political power. For a good reproduction contract, I'll need the money. Shepard, this is Liara. I've got the data. Come see me when you've got a moment. You 
can sell something that dangerous with just a contract and a waiver? These are the Terminus systems. Everything's dangerous, and everything's for sale. Either we tax and monitor it to keep some control, or the smugglers get a monopoly. Alright, with the hacking job completed, we have obtained 5 Renegade points and enough XP to level up again, but we'll take care of that in the next episode. For now, we can speed things up as we make our way back to Conrad Werner. Alright. Let's do it. Excellent. So the total comes to 116,420 credits. Oh, of course. I, uh... I just need to make a call. I should, uh... Check the warranty first. Loser. And that brings this conversation to a conclusion as well. Let's continue onwards now and see how things are going inside of the bar. to the judge. My surveillance vids caught your extortion attempt from four different angles. I was misled. I was told that you had agreed to sell. Take her away before I have my bartender throw her out. Well, it looks like the Asari merchant had that coming. However, I'm not quite sure Conrad is able to grasp what just happened, so we probably owe him an explanation. What happened? The undercover cop from the weapons kiosk just got arrested. Now, instead of lying to him, I would prefer to tell the truth, and since we still have the option to gain morality points afterwards, let's tell him what really went down. She wasn't a cop. She was using you to try to take over this bar. What? No. But, but she said... But she was pretty and blue. She wanted to get coffee, and she smiled when she said coffee. I'm pretty sure it was a euphemism. I screwed this up, didn't I? I screw everything up. Damn it, I'm so stupid. Who was I to think I could do what you do? Now, once again, it is very important not to pick any of the options on the right here, and instead focus on the charm or intimidate options on the left. And while I would say that Conrad did in fact screw up, we probably don't have to say that to his face. You did fine. Thanks for holding the reins while I was gone. It's good to know that someone cared. Really? Really. You did a great job, Conrad. Now please go home. Let me take it from here. Can do, Shepard. And thanks. It's really good to have you back. Right, so here we are with the final assignment of the episode completed. And it is actually possible for Conrad Werner to die as a result of how we handle this assignment, which is why I pointed out that you have to be cautious when picking dialogue options. In the end, you just have to make sure that Conrad is not doubting himself. That will be enough to keep him safe. Now, at this point, we have one more person in the bar that we have not talked to yet. She is in a bit of a side room, and talking to her will trigger Miranda's loyalty mission, and as you can imagine, that is exactly what we'll do in the next episode. Without spoiling anything, I think I can say that things will also get a bit more action-packed in the next episode, and I will also try to keep it a little shorter than this one. A one-hour video simply takes a huge amount of time to edit. So, with that being said, let's make the cut in today's episode. As always, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, then I would be happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel further, then you can of course either subscribe if you haven't already, or you can also check out and maybe pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.